It is a story that sounds like the plot of a Hollywood thriller. Imagine this. A group of robbers break into a farm. What do they discover? Four million dollars in cash hidden in the furniture. But here's the plot twist. This money was actually black money that was stashed there. So what does the owner of the farm do? He recovers some of the loot and instead pays the robbers to keep quiet. And now let me tell you the bigger plot twist. The owner of this farm is South Africa's president, Cyril Ramaphosa. So this is how it all played out. Take a look at the video on your screen. The video was released by the Economic Freedom Fighters. This is an opposition party in South Africa. They alleged that this is the CCTV footage of the robbery. Criminals broke into Ramaphosa's Fala Fala wildlife farm. They discovered large sums of money. The money was hidden in various pieces of furniture. The president is said to have been abroad at the time. After returning, he asked his head of security to probe the robbery. They recovered some of the stolen loot. All of them were then paid nearly $10,000 to stay silent. Things escalated on the 1st of June. Arthur Fraser is the former head of the South African State Security Agency. This is the country's spy agency. So he walked into a police station in Johannesburg, filing a criminal complaint against the president, Cyril Ramaphosa. What was the complaint about? Fraser accused Ramaphosa of kidnapping, bribery and money laundering. He also accused him of concealing a crime at his farm. Soon after, the president came out with a statement. He said the funds were stolen, but added that this was private money. Ramaphosa insisted that his hands are clean, calling the money proceeds from animal sales in his farm. He also suspended the country's top anti-corruption official. It also requires great courage from all of us. In recent days, we have seen those who stand to lose the most from the fight against corruption, resorting to dirty tricks and intimidation in a bid to get us back to back down. But we will not be deterred by threats of any kind whatsoever. Now, Ramaphosa's statement has raised even more questions, especially about the legality of the money. One, did Ramaphosa declare this income from sales before? And two, was there a cover-up indeed? Either way, the allegations are embarrassing for the president. The scandal may affect Ramaphosa's chances of being re-elected as the ANC chairperson in December. For now, he has his party support, but the opposition is asking him to step aside. Ramaphosa had vowed to stamp out corruption when he came to office. So to be involved in a corruption scandal himself is em embarrassing to say the least. But the scandal could be more politically damaging for his party, ANC, than for the leader. During Ramaphosa's presidency, ANC has seen its popularity slide. The party recorded its worst poll result ever in local elections in 2021. The ANC is also grappling with two other high-level corruption cases. The Gupta brothers have been arrested in the UAE. The Indian Born brothers face charges of political corruption under former South African President Jacob Zuma. Zuma is currently facing trial in another case involving a $2 billion arms deal in the 1990s. And with us on the broadcast is Johannes Mayberg. He is a journalist with us from Cape Town. Uh, thanks very much for being here with us. Like I said, this sounds like a movie plot. Unfortunately, the protagonist is the president of a country. Uh, if you can uh, just piece together what happens from here onwards, we understand an investigation is pending. But how fair can that probe be, given that uh, Sir Ram Fossa continues to remain president? And should he not be stepping aside for that probe to continue? 
Yes, your introduction was was very accurate uh, where you called this a very a bizarre case. Uh, I think many of us are still trying to come to terms to understand what exactly is going on. Uh, this came from out of nowhere. Uh, the news broke on Sunday uh, of this alleged break in, which happened two years ago already. Um, as you said, the background is we're looking at the most advanced economy in Africa, uh, beleaguered with corruption, and a president coming to power uh, saying that he will address this, particularly the, cor the alleged corruption under his predecessor, who is from the same party. Uh, and now he is involved in this really, really strange case um, that might bring him down probably won't bring down the party in the next elections, but it certainly may um, trigger the downfall of the president. Uh, and what then becomes of uh, the image of the country, what happens uh, becomes of the, the, the fight against corruption. Uh, what needs to happen next now is our prosecuting authority is investigating these allegations to see uh, you know, how, you know, is there a case for for money laundering? Why did he have millions of dollars uh, at his house that were undeclared? He also, this uh, robbery happened while he was a member of, of cabinet. He was uh, the deputy president at the time. Um, wasn't allowed to be having other incomes at the time other than his, his work for the government. Um, now, he is one of the richest men in the country and he did make his millions uh, in business. Um, so there's a lot of questions that need to be answered. Once the prosecuting authority decides, okay, there is a case to be made, they will charge him with the criminal charges, either money laundering or corruption or you know, there are a range of possibilities. Then we'll need to see what happens. Uh, the ruling party, the ANC, has uh, recently decided uh, that anyone of the party who has is charged with a criminal offence should step down. So does this apply to Mr. Ramaphosa? We'll have to see. Um, also, no one really expected this to happen. It came rather from out of the blue. Right. If you can also uh, briefly summarise for us what Sil Ramaphosa's defence has been. Now, he claims... Uh, when questioned about the legality of this money, that these are proceeds from animal sales, uh, from sales from that farm. Uh, but this money was found, uh, we understand from the reports, hidden inside furniture items. So why do that? And uh, also, uh, he has, uh, we understand, sagged his country's top anti-corruption official. Yes, you see different, uh, let's say, political games and narrative streams uh, overlap here now. And in a while, we'll, we'll, we'll probably speak about what happened in Parliament as well, the upheavals there. Um, firstly, the sale of, of the animals. So this is luxury game. Uh, this is one of his streams of, of income uh, formally. So this, you know, here we're talking of... Uh, wild animals. So it might be rhinoceros, it might be giraffe. Uh, he uh, is quite well, well known for for his trade in, in sort of South African buffalo. Um, didn't give much details over where this comes from. These A lot of these animals, yes, may be worth, uh, let's say, a million dollar or a few hundred thousands of, of dollars. But once again, uh, you need a permit to trade in these. Um, why was it done in cash? And then as you say, bizarrely allegedly some of the money was stashed in for example a couch so why have millions of dollars in cash stashed in a couch at your farm and right. then when it's stolen you you don't report it to, to the police um hasn't he hasn't given much more detail than that saying that the police should be left to investigate uh, the case and then make a decision uh, but that is also a standard answer for for politicians in south africa they'll say it's under investigation i don't want to incriminate myself we need to Yes. Let the law take its, its course. Yes. Johannes Myberg, thanks very much for being here with us and helping us piece together uh, the various twists and turns in this bizarre uh, case that we're looking at. Uh, we're leaving it there for the moment. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.